Are you feeling the cabin fever? Well, I have some ideas for you in this video to keep your kids entertained, to beat it, and have fun at the same time. Plus, I have a giveaway that is sponsored by Think Fun. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet here in San Diego. We are on, I think, the end of week two of quarantine. So I thought it'd be great to do a cabin fever giveaway video filled with some ideas that you can play with at home. So I'm gonna be showing you a couple of things and I have a giveaway at the end of this video that is sponsored by Think Fun. If you're new to the Purple Alphabet, I would love it if you were to join the family. Just click the subscribe button. We do educational activities for kids and ideas and inspirations to learn through play, lots of hauls and giveaways too. So I'd love it if you would leave a comment say hi and tell me you're new and if you're not new leave a comment too because I like to hear from you as well I have a little bit of something for everyone and we're gonna start it off with this matching game from Wonder Forge and it's all superhero themed first one I want to start off with is this one from Wonder Forge and so this is a matching game and not only that it's a Marvel superhero matching game I have a little one that loves superheroes so this is really great it's for ages three and up so this is the youngest player game that I'm going to show you today so inside we have our 72 matching tiles plus plus our instructions and these just pop right out and you can get started. And of course this game is played like a traditional matching game where you turn over all of the pieces. And like I said, there's 72 of these tiles and then you play the matching game. So if your child is into superheroes, particularly the Marvel ones, they are gonna know these characters. I'm gonna turn some over here so you can get a look on what they are. Iron Man, Black Panther, we've got Squirrel Girl. And then for gameplay, of course you turn them all upside down in a little grid. Move these out of the way to kind of show you what I had set up there. Now I always like it when you have the really little ones who are learning how to do this to do it with just a few to start with and then work your way up to bigger and more pieces. So that way they don't get too overwhelmed and frustrated. So maybe cut it down quite a bit so they don't get too frustrated. For your beginning matchers, you can even do a grid of six, a grid of eight, a grid of four, and then work your way up to be a little bit more difficult. So I didn't really mix up my cards too well, but basically the game of matching, you turn over one and you look for the match and see if you find it. I didn't find it, so I turn over both pieces again, and then it's the next person's turn. So maybe they do this one and then they do this one. No match and you keep on going until you find the matches. These kinds of matching games are great for memory. They're also perfect for a first game. So if you're trying to collect some games for your first games for your kids, matching games are perfect. I talked about this a lot in my Toy Fair video. Oh my gourd. This one is a really cool game. It's from Ravensburger. Moving up in age range, we have Oh My Gourd. It's a gourdastic growing game. This one's ages six and up, two to four players. It takes about 15 minutes to play and this one's from Ravensburger and inside we have everything we need to play our instruction booklets we have four garden plots so that's what these cards are four gourds we're gonna punch these out in a minute and here are our gourd stands so this is how we stand them up we have one die and then these are our resource cards our power cards and our turn order cards so the object of this game is that we're growing these giant gourds with the help of all of our gardening tools and a lucky ladybug but we have to be careful because there's critters and bad weed that will stop our gourds from growing. So we gotta protect our garden from all those unwanted things and then we give it everything that it needs to keep our gourd growing to win. So let's play a game. Let's just say I'm playing by myself. <laughs> but you would absolutely have to play it with two or more players on this. But just for sake of example, we have our garden plot right here and then we would set our gourd pieces kind of close by. The gourd pieces are all numbered so you know what order they go in. On top of our garden plot, we're gonna put our gourd stand and then everybody gets a turn order so this is a great card that explains the steps on how to play so you don't forget we have our garden tokens our garden guest tokens and each one of these does a different thing we have our big bad weed which blocks us from playing any soil cards we have our clever critter this one blocks us from playing flower cards which are our green cards we have mr. frost which blocks us from playing sun and water cards which are yellow and blue and then we have our ladybug which actually helps us to build our gourd with all of our gourd pieces so those go in the center of the table we also have a stack of cards which are all these elements down below so our water sun soil and flower cards so they're all mixed in here along with our resource cards and our resource cards are what can block all of our little critters from coming into our garden so each player will get five cards and then we place this in our little center here and we turn one over so the first person gets to roll if they get a green thumb then they don't get anything in their garden which is great 
then they can look at their cards, draw a card, and start playing. So our object is to do numbers of six here. So this is actually a power card that would get rid of frost. So I probably wanna keep that because that could be important later. Then I've got, um, three here, but I don't have any sun cards, so I can't play those, but my soil cards are two, three, four. So I can't quite play anything yet, but on my turn, I can discard any card I want into my discard pile. So since I've got three here, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my one water, and that goes in the discard pile. Comes around my turn again, I roll. I got the ladybug. Now the ladybug, so I put the ladybug there. If I happen to score, I get to add another layer on in my garden. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw another card. So I have six, so I don't quite make six on any of these. So I don't have six brown cards, I don't have six green cards, and I don't have six of these combined, but I can discard. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this one. Comes back to my turn. I wanna mention if somebody else gets one of these critters that are in my garden, they, can, they have to take it out of my garden. So that gives me an opportunity. So say someone else rolled the ladybug, Bug, then I'd have to say out of my garden and get into theirs. I roll again. Let's just do something for fun here. Let's see. Let's say I did get frost for sake of example. So I'd have to take the frost one and place it here in my garden. I can now play my frost card on my turn to get rid of it and block it from being in my garden. I need to replace that card. So I have three, four, five, and then go on around to our playing. Ladybug, four, looks like I can play four, five, six. I can play these two cards to grow a layer in my gourd. And because I rolled the ladybug, I get my extra layer two pieces in mine and the ladybug goes back. So basically what we're trying to do is score six points for each one of these categories in here before we get blocked by one of these creatures. And each time we do six, we get to add a piece to our gourd until our gourd is completely created. So we're learning some really great strategy skills here on how we can keep the cards in our hands available from when we need them to grow our gourds to be completely created. And then learning that, you know, we need water, soil, and um, avoiding frost and things like that. So it's definitely a cool game. It's very different. It's probably like nothing you've seen before. And I love that it has the component of really taking the strategy into creating these elements for your garden by doing the numbers and working so that you don't get stuck with these critters in your garden. Next up, I have a game from Think Fun. This one is a logic brain teaser game and it's for the older kids. Next up, we have a moon spinner and it's for ages eight and up. And this one's a brain teaser game. So that like the size because you know those will fit great in restaurant kits, right? I also love that it's rainbow. So we have six multicolored circles that are connected to form crescent moon shape patterns. Now what we can do is reposition each circle by rotating it into different sections of the puzzle. So our goal is to scramble all of the sections and then we have to figure out how to rotate them back to their starting positions. So this is what it should look like when we're done. Let's see if we can actually do this. So you can see when I turn it here, all the pieces kind of move and rotate. So we have, I'm so scared I'm gonna mess it up you guys. <laughs> So this one whole circle moves. And then we have another, if we move it like this, we have now made another circle here with the orange and blue. So that can be moved. And depending on where you land, let's see. Let's see, let's see here. Ah, see, look, I made another circle with the red, orange, and blue. And so now that rotates. I can make another circle over here. So now I've got all the colors mixed up. So my goal would be to get basically back to how it was, which I don't know if I'm gonna do in this video. I can certainly try. Okay, well there I got some of the blue, but I still have a missing blue over here. Oh my goodness, this is cool. It's definitely a fun fidget toy. What if I switched that to there and then that to there? So I'm trying to get all my blue together. Oh, it's so close. And then my orange back. How do I get my orange back? There's one orange, but I got that orange. Well, I don't think I'm going to get this done in this video. <laughs> Not like the last brain teasers I did from Think Fun. Okay, then we got one orange over here. That helped. So you can definitely see how this would take some time to figure out. And if you have that kid that just loves brain teasers like this, like the, you know, the cube puzzles that you have to do and figure out how to put them all back together, then this is definitely a take like next level up. Hmm, might just sit and play with this. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the evening. Now I've got it mixed up more, huh? So because I'm gonna be here for a while figuring this out, I don't think I am going to keep you watching me do this. 
Yes, yes, look. But now I need that. Oh, I'm so close. Okay. <laughs> So you guys get the idea of how interesting and fun this one is. Definitely different. Check it out if you have a kid that just kind of loves this or even just likes to fidget with things because quite honestly, it's a great fidget toy. And now for the giveaway details. First of all, make sure you are subscribed to the Purple Alphabet channel. Then leave a comment down below telling me your best tip to beat cabin fever. Then head over to the giveaway link to officially enter to win. We are giving away a moon spinner from Think Fun. You must be 18 years of age or older and have a US postal address. And of course, I have some secret bonus opportunities around social media to score some extra points. You guys make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.